今の見物というところからです今の見物文法は仏祖面々の行事より来たれる慈恩なり仏祖もし丹田せずはいかにしてか今日に足らん一句の恩なお放射すべし一方の恩なお放射すべし イワンヤ消防現像無常大法の大恩これ放射せざらんや一日に無料豪華者の神妙ステンこと願うべし法のために捨てんかばねばせぜの我ら帰りて帰りて来廃供養すべし書店友人共に苦行を尊重し守護三段するところなり道理それ必然なるがゆえに祭典遅刻には毒炉を売り毒炉を買うバラモンの方久しく風門ゼリ風門ゼリ風文ゼリ これ文法の人の毒炉を境外の孤独大きいことを尊重するなり今どうのために神妙を捨てざれば文法の孤独至らず神妙を帰り見ず文法するがごときはその文法従熟するなり この毒炉は尊重すべきなり今我ら銅のために捨てざらん毒炉は他実にさらされてやげに捨てられるとも誰かこれを来廃せん誰かこれを埋埋せん今日の証拠に帰りて恨むべし鬼の仙骨を打つ
初熱いまだ人を破らず。初熱いまだ道を破らず。不臭よく人を破り、道を破る。麦を受け、わらびを取るは道族の象徴なり。血を求め、父を求めて、吉久に習わざるべし。ただまさに行事なる一日は諸仏の安利なり、えーまあ。これは今日のところです。ダルマさんについて書かれた部分の最後のところです。英語でも読んでまいります。Somebody asked yesterday、uh, at the tea meeting where we, you can find the Shobo Genzo.、Uh, we have several in the library,、uh, the Nishijima translation. I think there's also a version of the Yokoi translation, which is kind of rare. And we have the Nishiyama translation, which is different from the Nishijima. If you're looking for it on the internet,、uh, the easiest way is to just Google for Shobo Genzo and then you scroll downwards. And you can go directly to the Shasta Abbot, Abbey translation. There's a PDF, or you'd go to this one, the Zen site. And according to the chapter, sometimes you have several choices, but you have a link both to the Shasta Abbey and you got a link to the Nishijima translation. If you go to Dogen's teachings, and here you got. From volume one to volume four,、uh, just in case you don't know how to find these. And there's several other, like if you're into Dogen texts, there's lots of links here to、um, other sites here.、Um, so this would be the Shasta Abbey version.、Um, And this would be the Nishijima version.、Um, let's have a look at the Nishijima version.、Uh, it's on the PDF, it's page、uh, 213. On the right side, I got this mark 138b, and so it's、uh, above from there.、Um, If, yeah, it, it starts in, in the middle of the text, there's this the sentence If the Buddhist patriarchs had not passed on the one to one transmission.、Um, last time, last month, I think I was uh, uh, talking about、uh, the seals of the <coughs> office of Yofu.、Um, it's something to do with a, a turtle uh, returning uh, a favor. And、uh, well, I don't know if you can find it, but the last sentence last month was Our meeting Buddha and hearing Dharma in the present. Ah, no, that's the first one today. Our meeting Buddha and hearing Dharma in the present is benevolence that has come from the conduct and the observance of every Buddhist patriarch. If the Buddhist patriarchs had not passed on the one to one transmission, How could it have arrived at the present day? We should repay the kindness contained in even a single phrase. We should repay the kindness contained in even a single Dharma. How then could we fail to repay our debt of gratitude for the great blessings of the right Dharma I treasury, the supreme great method? We should desire to forsake in a single day bodies and lives as countless as the sands of the Ganges. To the dead body we have abandoned for the sake of the Dharma, we ourselves will return in age after age to make prostrations and serve offerings. And it will be venerated, honored, guarded, and praised by all gods and dragons. For the truth 
of abandonment for the Dharma is inexorable. Rumors have long been heard from India in the West of the Brahman's custom of selling skulls and buying skulls. Uh, they honor the great merit in the skull and bones of a person who has heard the law. If we fail now to abandon body and life for the truth, we will not attain the merit of hearing the Dharma. If we listen to the Dharma without regard for body and life, that listening to the Dharma will be fulfilled, and this very skull will deserve to be honored. Skulls, skulls that we do not abandon today for the truth will someday lie abandoned in the fields, bleaching in the sun. But who will do prostrations to them? Who would want to sell or buy them? We might look back with regret upon the spirit that we showed today. There are the examples of the demon that beat its former bones and the God that prostrated itself to its former bones. When we think on to the time when we will turn emptily to dust, those who are without love and attachment now will gain appreciation in future. The emotion arise might be something akin to a tear in the eye of a person looking on. Using the skull that we will turn emptily to dust and which may be abhorred by people, fortunately we can practice and observe the Buddha's right Dharma. So never fear the cold. Suffering from the cold has never destroyed a person. Suffering from the cold has never destroyed the truth. Only be afraid of not training. Not training destroys a person and destroys the truth. Not training can destroy a person and can destroy the truth. Never fear the summer heat. The summer heat has never destroyed a person. The summer heat has never destroyed the truth. Not training can destroy a person and can destroy the truth. The acceptance of barley and the gathering of bracken are excellent examples from the Buddhist world and the secular world. We should not be like demons and animals, thirsting after blood and thirsting after milk. Just one day of conduct and observance is the actual practice of the Buddhas. Um, so here ends the part about uh, Bodhidharma that I've been talking about for the last couple of months. It's pretty long. It's the longest one in the whole Yoshi chapter. Uh, so it's even longer than the part on the Buddha um, or all of the other patriarchs. Probably because Dogen Zenji was especially identifying with uh, Bodhidharma's bringing uh, the Dharma from India and risking his life and giving up his comfortable life in India to um, live far away. Uh, also from the Chinese capital at the time, uh, retreat to the mountains and just sit in the mountains. So it's probably not an accident that Dogen Zenji wrote this chapter when he was contemplating to move from Kyoto, the capital, the Japanese capital at the time, deep into the mountains. Uh, and people probably around him and the students were asking, well, why don't you do that? It's much easier to practice the Dharma and to preach the Dharma in the capital. Why would you want to go to the mountains and where you have nobody to preach to except the monkeys? And you don't know what you're going to have to eat. Uh, okay. Mazu wa ja ni hongo de ちょっと意味を考えたいと思います。今の
物素もし丹田せずはいかにして今日に至らんもし物素型がこうして、えー、マンツーマンで一人から一人へ、まあ、器から別の器に液体を移すように伝えてこなければどうしてこの仏法が今日に至ったんであろうかという意味です私がまあ毎月あの宮園地源寺で講義している弁道は、えー、というテクストがありますけれどもその最初にもまあ似たような話が出てきます諸仏如来ともに妙法を丹田してあの久保台を称するに最上無意の妙術ありこれただ仏,仏に授けて横島なることなきはすなわち自由三昧その標準なりという有名な言葉から始まるんですけれども、えー、つまり私たちが今修行しているまあ自由三昧という言葉で表されているけれども、えー、自分が生きているこの命,命を受け止めてそれに生かされているということに気づいた上、それを存分に生かすという三昧。これはシャクソンから今日までの物素型が一人からまた一人へ伝えてきたおかげだからこそ、自分に今届いている。で、自分もそれを受けて実践していれば、この物素型と、つながってこの伝統の一人になることができるということだと思います。今の見物、文法は仏祖面々の行事より来たれる、自音なり、仏祖もし丹田せずはいかにして今日に至らん。一句の音なを放射すべし、法の女を放射すべし。物素型のそういう修行がもしなかったならば私たちは今日それが実践できない。なのでまあ法音のつもりでこの恩返しのつもりで仏たちの一句一句の恩を返し一歩一歩の恩を返すべき、まあ、先月話したように、亀ですら、スズメですら、人間に恩返しをしたという例はまあ伝われているので、人間である自分が恩返しをせずしてはどうするんだということでしょう。言わんや消防、原図、無常、大法の大恩。一句一方ですら恩返しを忘れてはいけない。ならば消防現像、無常大法の大恩、これを放射せざらんや。どうしたらこの恩を返さずにはいられるんであろう。一日に無料、高画者の神妙、高画者という難しい言葉が出てきますけれども、あのーインドにあるガンゲスという大きな川の砂ほど多くの風の命。それはどうやら、まあ、あの数学ではこれもしくはこれという、まあ、木が遠くなるほど大きい数らしいけれども、えー私たちは今命一つしかないけれども、たくさんあっても、すべて、そういう命のすべてをかけて、ねごべし、ねごべし、それを捨てんことをねごべし、この命のすべてをかけて恩返しをすることをねがおべしであると。法のために捨てんかばねは、せいぜいの我ら、かいりて、来拝供養すべし。そうして、仏法のために我が身を、また我が心を投げ出せば、せいぜいの我ら、かいて、来拝供養すべし。すべてのものが
それには感謝をするであろう。それは人にも認められるであろう。書店、友人、人間だけではなく、あの神様ですら、えー、苦行を尊重し、守護、参、え、拝、ー、するところなり、道理、それ必然なるがゆえに。祭典、漆黒には、ドクロを売り、ドクロを買う、バラモンの方、久しく、風紋せり。ここ、あのインドの話が出てきます。私はインドに行ったことはないんですけれども、えー、聞いた話では、今でも、えー、優れた業者の骨は、非常にあの亡くなった後に大事にされて、高い値段で売られているとは、そういう話聞いたことがあります。道元禅師の時代でも、道元禅師の耳にそういう噂は入った。つまり、インドでは、ドクロを高く売って、このドクロを高い値段で買うバラモンたちがいるらしい。誰のドクロでもいいわけではなくて、ちゃんと仏の方を聞いて、その実践した人のドクロでこそ、えー、そういうふうに大事にされる。これ、文法の人のドクロ、境、え、外、ー、の苦毒、大きいことを尊重するなり、ちゃんと法を聞いた人のそういうドクロは非常に大事にされている。今、どうのために神妙を捨てざれば、文法の苦毒、至らず私たちはこの一生の間自分の命を投げ捨てて法を聞くことがなければ当然ながら苦毒を積むことができないだから神妙を顧みず文法するがごときはその文法を成熟するなりしかし自分の命をかけて文法をすればその苦毒によって文法が成熟をし、このドクロは存じすべきなり、自分が死んだ後のこのドクロもおそらく人々に大事にされるんであろう。今我ら、どうのために捨てざらぬドクロは他実にさらされて、野外に捨てられるとも、誰かこれを礼拝せん、誰かこれをまいまいせん。もし私たちが一生の間に仏道のために自分を捨てることがなければどうせいつかは死んでこの頭がドクロに変わるんだろうけれども仏道のために自分を捨てたことのない人はドクロになったとしてもそれはその辺で捨てられてさらされて野外に捨てられるとも誰がこれを礼拝せん誰がそんなやつ、そんなしょうもないボンプのドクロを礼拝するんであろう誰がそれに金を出して買おうと思っているだろうかと。今日の証拠、帰りて恨むべし、えー。つまり、そうして一緒の間、怠けて、本気になって自分の命を投げ出さない、そういう、まあ、ボンプの根性。これをここで、証拠。根実の証拠という言葉で表せているけれども、そういう私たちのボンプの根性を、かえりて恨むべし。えー、これを、まあ、恨みなさいというわけです。えー、自分の怠け心を、恨んでしまえで次の文章に鬼と天という言葉が出てきますけれども鬼の仙骨を打つありき天の仙骨を来せし,せしあり、えー、鬼はなぜ鬼になったかというと自分を未知のために捨てたことがない。自分を仏道のために捨てたことのない人は、来世はアシュラになったり、畜生になったり、鬼になる
。で、その時点ではもう遅い。遅いので、来世の自分の骨に自覚を壊したときは、なんでお前が、つまり自分、なんでお前が前世においてもっと励んでくれなかったかと。まあ、そういう意味で仙骨,仙骨を打つ。自分の骨、前世の自分の骨を蹴って、お前がもうちょっと頑張ってくれたらいいのにというわけですね。天というのは天上界に生まれた人。なぜ天上界に生まれたかというと、えー、来世においてちゃんと頑張ったおかげで天に登れた。そういう人は天の仙骨を礼拝せしありと、えー。天上界に生まれた人が前世人間として頑張ったその骨、お骨にであった時はありがとう、ありがとうご苦労様だと。えー、前世のお前たち、この骨、えー、この骨のおかげで根性の私がここにいるんだと。つまり、根性において自分を捨てててこそ先がある。いや、命が惜しいと思って自分を捨てないのであれば、後々は後悔するんであろうという、まあそういう話だと思います。いたずらに人路に消するとき。思いやれば今の愛釈なし。後の憐れみあり。どうせいずれかは土に変えるんであろう。それを思えば今自分が執着しているすべてのものを失ってしまう。そして残るのは憐れみだけである。催されるところは民主党の涙のごとくなりべし、えー。そうして自分が死んでしまった後はもう今のまあ全ての悩み苦しみはまあ赤の谷の涙のようなものであったと。ようやく気づくんだろう。いたずらに人道に徹して人に厭われんどころを持てよく幸いに仏性棒を行事すべし、えー。どうせいずれは死ぬんだろう。ならばその私が死んだ後、自分が死んだ後のどころが人々に大事にされるように、今せっかく仏性棒。仏の正しい教えにであったわけだからそれを行事すべしぜひとも辛くても実践すべきであるこのゆえに寒苦をずることなかれだから冬の寒さを恐れてはいけないなぜならば、寒空、いまだ人を破らず。この寒さによって人が破れたことはない。寒空によって仏像が破れるということはない。どんなに寒くても、それによって殺されることがない。ただ、不臭を押すべし。宗教しないこと、それこそ。恐れるべきであるなぜならば、修行しないことによってこそ人が破り、道が破られる。えー、寒熱、えー、暑熱については同じです。暑さ。夏の暑さも、えー、暑さが恐ろしいわけではない。なぜならば、この暑さによって自分が死ぬんではない。あ暑さによって道が。えー、消えるわけではない。実践しないことによって自分は破り、道が破れる。<笑>え
麦を受けわらびを取るわという出てきますけれどもある時にインドでシャクソンが旅の最中に90日暗号をしたけれども食べ物がなくて馬用の麦をシャクソンとその弟子たちがを食べた90日の暗号の間しのいだという話がありますわらびというのは中国で戦いに敗れた人たちが敵の奴隷になるのは嫌で山に逃げてそこでわらびばっかりを食べてしのいでたという話から来ているらしいんです。麦を受けわらびを取るは同族の消食なり麦というのはどうですね仏道を修行した人たちわらびの場合は俗に、在勤の人たちですけれども、優れたそういう昔の例えもありますよ。血を求め、父を求めて。血というのはおそらくまあ肉のことですね。道元禅師の時はどうだったかわからないけれども、都にいればたまには親戚から差し入れがあって、肉食べることもあったかもしれない。牛乳も飲めたかもしれない。あの福井の山に入ったらそういうものも口に入らなくなるんだろう、えー、だけれどもそういうものが欲しい欲しいと思っていればそれは所詮鬼畜でしかない地を求め父を求めて鬼畜に習わざるべし、えー、そんな鬼畜,鬼畜の真似をするなただまさに行事なる一日は諸物の行,案行理なり。ただ一日だけでも、今日という一日だけでも仏たちに習って仏たちの真似をして、この今日という一日を仏のように過ごすべきであると。ここでマダルマさんのパートが。終わってしまいまいす、えーえー、I would like to say some things in English next.、Um, first of all, well, I'm giving this、uh, talk on the Yoshi chapter. Uh, once each month before the five day sessions, and every five days we have a talk on the Shobo Genzo Zui Monkey.、Mm, I think somewhere on the Antaji homepage it says that these talks are in Japanese, but、uh, most of them are in half English, or sometimes the, the whole talk is in English.、Um, Which is because, well, right now there's only one Japanese person here. So、um, most people here are not native Japanese speakers, and most people actually don't speak any Japanese at all. So it's only natural、um, that part of the talk is in English. And those people who give a talk and don't speak Japanese, then naturally they give their talk in English. On the other hand, I've been saying that also a number of times already.、Uh, it's kind of strange that we come to Japan to study the teaching of Dogen,、uh, who wrote in Japanese.、Uh, we do it in Japan、um, together with Japanese practitioners, but then we end up doing it in English.、Uh, why would you do it in English? If you want to do it in English, you could do it in America and Europe. There are other places where you could study、uh, Dogen's teaching in English, you would have it easier. So,、um, if you think that there's a strong reason why you want to practice Zen in Japan,、um, you should speak a certain amount of Japanese.、Um, learning 
to read Dogen in the original takes quite a good amount of time. Mm. But that doesn't mean that, well, you should make the effort. Um, I often get mails, just the other day I got another mail like uh, people say, well, I'm a little bit above the age limit, but I'm still pretty strong and I don't speak any Japanese yet, but I will learn as much as possible before I come to Antaiji and then I can study when I'm actually in Japan. And I'm usually quite good with languages. Is that okay? Um, and all of you who are here already probably know it's not so easy. Mm, maybe some of you who came here thought the same. Uh, okay, I don't speak Japanese so well, but I can study once I'm there. Um, but for one thing, once you're here, you don't have so much time to study. It's not that you have no time at all, but you do not have much time and if you have nothing to start with so basically you speak no japanese right from the start it means that everybody needs to speak with you in english and there's nothing you can really grasp on um, it's hard to make any progress if you come with uh, zero japanese it, it's still possible but you have to take uh, put in a lot of effort um, some things that are important is, for example, you need to become able to answer the telephone. You need to be able to greet guests when they come. If you need to go to the top hospital, you need to be able to, uh, to communicate with the doctors and the nurses. And also, um, these study hours might not be the most important part of our practice, but it's also one important part of practice. So um it's impossible to read dogen in the original right from the start but if you think seriously about staying here long um, you should also try that um, so i'm sometimes uh, surprised that even the people who speak a certain amount of japanese already when they give a talk on the zui monkey not only do they give the talk in english but they don't even make the effort to try to read it. So it's always, please, Eko-san, can you read it? Please, Dosen-san, can you read it? Can some of the Japanese please read the text? Mm -hmm. Although it's hard work, I would, if I would, would be you, and I wanted to learn Japanese, uh, I would um, also try out to actually have a look at the original and uh, looking up all these chinese uh, characters is hard work but it's not impossible and that's how you learn and if you say well why should i waste my time on that the japanese for them it's much easier you're ending up wasting their time on the other end you could ask well why do the japanese have to sit through a one hour talk that's only in english uh, if you think it's too much to ask uh, to prepare uh, looking at the original text and trying to read the um, Zui Monkey parts that are given to you every five days are usually not so long. Um, here is where you can find them on the internet. The address above is where you would find the Whole of Shobo Genzo. Um, you, can, you also have it in these Iwanami. Well, there's the whole library is full of Shobo Genzo texts and, and comments on the text. The easiest available is this Iwanami version. This is the big print for uh, people with not so good eyesight. But then we also have the small one, the Zui Monkey size. Uh, but if you want to access it on the internet, uh, the address, the first address, Shomonji, there you have the whole Shobo Genzo on the internet. And the one below, this eheisenjimdo.com, um, also has a lot of Dogen texts, including the Zui Monkey. Um, there's also the Tenzo Kyokun on this site. Um, there's the Gakudo Yojinshu. There's a lot of well minor dogen texts 
And if you go here, this would be the Zui Monkey. Um, we also have this in the Iwanami Bunko version, of course. But if you um, go through this, the internet version, like here you got the numbers. Usually, whenever you're in charge of the monkey text, you got the chapter numbers, and those are the same ones that we're using. Like, for example, you have chapter 1 1, for example. And here you got your text. And if you know hiragana, you already have half of that. And the rest you have to look up, but basically you just copy it and then you Google it. And you would, well, you would somehow get to the, how you read it. I mean, in this case, it's kind of difficult because, well, just as the Wikipedia here, Entrance says there's lots of readings. Tsuitachi, Ichinichi, Ichijitsu. In this case, it would be the third version. You read it, Ichijitsu. Things like that you have to either look up or in the Iwanami Bunko version, often you have the so called Furiga. You have by the side, it tells you how to read it. So it's not impossible. It takes some time, but compared to when I came here, there was no internet. So what you had to do, you had to basically uh, look all the characters up in these thick uh, character dictionaries and you have to count the strokes and you have to find out which is the radical. Sometimes you spend 30 minutes until you found out which how you read the characters or what's the meaning. And even like a, a kind of difficult one like this one, you just copy it and you put it uh, into Google and you it tells you what this is. Well, in this case, actually, because it's... Uh, a difficult one because uh, I mean this uh, one here refers to the location in China or it could even be uh, Korea and this uh, ah, zoku, zoku ko so den no nakani zoku so this one here is difficult because it's one of the old characters but even that Google should know that this is zoku which means continued dictionary like this one I use this a lot. Uh, Victionary gives you all the readings of these characters, uh, the meaning, of course, um, the Chinese meaning and the, the Japanese meaning. And uh, you have this in other languages as well. So this is the Japanese page, but you can look it up in English if you want to. And here there's the Chinese one. You don't want the Chinese reading, but it gives you the, the Japanese as well. Japanese kanji and zoku would be in this case how you pronounce it. Ichijitsu shimeshite iwaku zoku koso den no naka ni aru zenji no eka ni isso ari. Well, it takes some time to prepare this, but it's not impossible. And each time you do it, you get a little bit better. If you never do that and you always ask the Japanese to do it for you, will never get to the point where you can read Dogen in the original. And well, the question is then, well, if after three years in Antai, you still can't read Dogen in the original, you could have studied like say in, in Tassahara or in the Jean Dronier in France as well. And uh, you could have studied uh, Dogen Zenji in first and translation. So this is where you can find the Zui Monkey if you're interested at this ehezen.jimdo.com page. And if you want to read the Shobo again, so it would be shomonji.or.jp. And here on the left side, you got all of the chapters. You can click the first one would be the Bendo, where there's the Genjo Koan. And the Gyoji would be here. There's two parts, the first part, the second part. Right now we're in the second part, and this is two days part here. And the difficult thing with the Schomborn site, it's a little bit tricky. The tricky thing is, um, unlike this printed version, they use only the new characters, new uh, Japanese characters. Like, for example, Hotoke. Today in Japan, you write it like this, which is pretty easy. Um, 
but the old way of writing it is like this. Um, if you copy it and put it into Google, even Google will tell you that this is the same as this. But sometimes a little bit confusing. And with the Shomonji site, you might see it here on the screen. There are some characters which are actually pictures. Like here, you got this Butsu, and then you got a picture here, and then, then you got this Men Men. Um, and this one here you can't copy because it's a picture. The reason why they use a picture is that there's no code for this. So this is a, today you would road, write it on, like this, which means patriarch, but they want to use the old character, which looks just a little bit different, but because there's no code for this character, they use a picture. So if you work with a site, it's a little bit of pain in the ass to find all of these picture pictograms uh, because you can't just copy it. You can copy this one, but you can't copy the next one. If you copy these and try to look it up on Google, it will only give you the Hotoke one. The second one doesn't appear there. Um, so, well, if you work with the internet, Shobogens in this case, the ones that are represented with pictures, you have to all look them up. For example, well, you have to use this parallel. But it's, it's not an impossible job either. And uh, let's look here at the original, um, or maybe I'll read once more from the English translation. I the other, uh, just read the Nishijima translation, maybe now I also read the Shasta Abbey translation. Uh, the Shasta Abbey translation of the first sentence is, in that we have encountered Buddha and heard the Dharma today, we are indebted for the loving kindness evidenced by the ceaseless practice of each and every Buddha and ancestor. In that we have encountered Buddha and heard the Dharma today, we are indebted for the loving kindness evinced by the ceaseless practice of each and every Buddha ancestor. Uh, Nishijima translated is as Our meeting Buddha and hearing Dharma in the present is benevolence that has come from the conduct and observance of every Buddhist patriarch. And now let's look at the original. Ima no kembutsu monpo wa busso men men no gyoji yoli hitarelu jion nari. So it's only half a line actually. Uh, it's maybe 25 characters, which in translation become three lines. And if you don't speak no Japanese, it's it's all just gibberish to you probably, but it's actually not so difficult if you look at the original. First is ima no, it's all uh, hiraganas, but ima is just the normal ima, it means now, ima no. Uh, ken butsu, ken is also a simple character which means to see. And butsu, the next one, is the old character for Buddha. So ken butsu means seeing the Buddha, mon means to listen, kiku, and ho means the Dharma. And if you don't know that, you can also copy that and just put it into Google. Um, and this, there would be, Google would to explain it to you in more simple Japanese. Of course, if you don't speak any Japanese at all, that's difficult, but if you speak like simple Japanese, like things like this, uh, you just put in it me ni hotoke o hai shi mimi ni buppo o kiku. Basically, seeing the Buddha with your eyes and hearing the Dharma with your ears. Um, and also, if you don't know how to read this stuff, also it would be here in Hidaga, kem butsu monpo. You don't have that in the text, but if you put it in Google, kem butsu monpo. And pretty straightforward, kem butsu monpo, seeing the Buddha hearing the Dharma, Imano, that we see the Buddha and hear the Dharma in the present. 
仏祖面々の行事より来たれる字をなり仏祖 is again the Buddha so is a picture here so you can't google it but it's the patriarch 面 means face and there's face and there's another face so it means face to face Uh, the Buddhas and patriarchs, face to face, did Gyoji, that's basically the title of the chapter here, uh, practice, maintain something through practice, or maintaining the practice. Yoli means uh, through something, kitarelu. Uh, kitarelu means uh, in modern Japanese would be kuru, to come. Uh, so in this case it means because of and G is a G is a character that you have for example in the Dai Dai Jihi um, Jihi Jihi means compassion uh, you often have that also in monks names uh, Jinen for example was a monk who lived here a couple of years ago Uh, G is compassion and on is a character that appears um, over and over again uh, in this section. Um, on means uh, favor or if you receive a favor. So, basically what this sentence then means, if you look at the, the whole thing. Um, the fact that we right now can see the Buddha and hear the Dharma is a favor that we receive because of the benevolence that's at the end here. It's a favor received through the benevolence of the fact that the Buddha patriarchs From face to face continued with the practice so our practice today is possible because the Buddhas one-to-one -one transmitted this practice and maintained the practice um, if you look at the original and look up some of the words that you don't know it's actually pretty straightforward and um, depending On the person might be even much easier to understand than our meeting Buddha and hearing Dharma in the present is benevolence that has come from the conduct and the perseverance of every Buddhist patriarch which is Nishijima's version or in that we have encountered Buddha and heard the Dharma today we are indebted for the loving kindness evidenced by the ceaseless practice of each and every Buddha and ancestors that's the correct uh, translation of course but hmm, with a certain amount of effort and study you can also get it from the original ima no means right now the present came butsu seeing the buddha listening to the dharma uh, is because of the buddha's patriarchs face to face maintaining of the practice um, their benevolence That made that possible. And the next sentence would be Busso, Moshi, Tanden, Sesua. Uh, Busso again is the Buddha patriarchs. Moshi means if. Also today's Japanese the same. Moshi, Moshi means, means if. Tan, Tan means uh, straight or simple, direct. Could also mean one to one. 100% like in the Gakudo Yojinshu, Dogen Zenji uses the example of a fluid that is, how do you say, spilled from one container to the next. So you move uh, water from one container to the next and you don't mix anything in there, also you don't spill it. Uh, that would be kind of one to one transmission. And in the Gakudo Yojinshu Dogen Zenji uses that as an example how the Dharma is transmitted from one Buddha to the next Buddha. Uh, busso Moshi Tan Den. Den means to transmit. 
Mm, that's the old uh, character. The new character would be That's how you write it today. So if you look it up in the Iwanami book, it would be this more simple character. But again, you can just copy it and put it into Google and you'll find out that this is actually the same as this. This means to transmit something. So Tanden means to directly transmit something or to, to transmit something without changing it. So it's a 100% faithful transmission. Busso, uh, moshi, tanden, sezu. Uh, sezu is a grammatical form that is also still used today in Japan, but not so often. In this case, now you would say shina kereba, if it was not. So there's a negation. The zu is kind of negating this. Um, if the Buddha's patriarchs would not have transmitted it faithfully, one to one, um, and uh, he's referring, of course, to the Gyoji. The fact that we can practice now is because the Buddha patriarchs practiced in the past. And because of their benevolence, today we can listen to Dharma and see the Buddha. If the Buddha patriarchs would not have done that one-to-one, -one, then Ika Nishite Konjitsu, or you can also read, read this Kyo, this is also something that you will often find uh, in the tea meeting you would say uh, basically this is today uh, this these two characters means today would be in modern japanese would be more uh, natural to say how 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 would it have reached until today. Ita Italo means to reach, Italan. Uh, if the Buddha patriarchs would not have transmitted it faithfully, one to one, how would have reached it until today? The Dharma and the practice. So again, very straightforward if you look at the original text. And the translations, of course, are not wrong, but Again, uh, Shasta Abbey translation would be, had the Buddhas and ancestors not directly transmitted the Dharma to us, how could it possibly have reached us in the present? For some reasons, Buddhas and ancestors are written with capital letters, but also transmitted. It's written with trans capitals, Dharma is with capitals, and it, how could it, for some reason they capitalize it, and gets this very mysterious sound because of this. How could it possibly have reached us in the present? Uh, Nishijima asks, if the Buddha patriarchs had not passed on the one-to-one -one transmission, how could it have arrived at the present day? Um, and that's of course correct, but yeah, if you look, if you make the effort to look at the original, you can see that it's actually more simple as you would think, uh, even if you look at this 800-year-old uh, Kamakura, Japanese. Ikku no on. Uh, on, again, is kind of a favor um, that you receive from somebody. Ikku means one verse. Ichi is one, of course, and ku means a verse or a sentence. So the favor of one sentence, the favor of one verse. Now, hōsha subeshi. Uh, hōsha means to return a favor, to pay gratitude. Uh, subeshi means that you should do something. So you should pay gratitude to even one sentence that you received as a favor. And ippo... No, on now, Hosha Subeshi. The same thing is repeated in this sentence, except that, uh, except that you don't have ku here, but you have ho. So before it was a verse, and here it's a dharma. Uh, one single dharma, the, the favor that you receive in the form of one single dharma, you should also repay that gratitude. And we might want to check with Nishijima. 
we should repay the kindness contained in even a single phrase. We should repay the kindness contained in even a single dharma. Ivanya. Ivanya is a, uh, something that in the past the Japanese said a lot and now you don't hear it so much. It means uh, all the more. Like if A is true, then even more B is true. And this even more is expressed with this Ivanya. But here again, if you never heard about Ivanya, probably um, looking it up on Google would give you the translation. So here it's translated in Japanese. You could also try, if you write English behind the thing. Maybe it gives you the English translation. Iwan Shia, Iwan Sha. Ihan. Ah, Ihan Sha, that's different. Iwan Ya. What would happen if we put it in brackets? Or in brackets? Iwan Ya. Iwan Ya, Iwan Ya, but well, Google doesn't know it. Ivanya, well, here this we are getting closer. Zen in Toakunin, Ivanya. Uh, Japanese English Dictionary, Glossby. Ivanko, Ihanko, Ishoshan. Okay, sometimes it's not so easy. Iwaku. In this case, probably you have better chances if you replace this wa with this one. Iwanya. Still no success. Not to speak of, that's that's the meaning. So let alone, that's right. Not to mention, much more. So sometimes you have to experiment a little bit. In this case, we were successful we, because we replaced the ha with the wa, ivanya, ivanya. So um, what Google tells you here, say nothing of not to speak of, let alone, not to mention is the right translation of this one. Ivanya Shobo Genzo. Shobo Genzo is the title of this book and it means the true Dharma I storage. So you can in interpret that in a lot of ways, but it may basically means it means uh, the truth that was discovered by Shakyamuni uh, when he practiced uh, Zen under the Bodhi tree and he saw the morning star on the morning of uh, December 8th. And the truth that he discovered and that he transmitted uh, both through the practice of Sazen and through the uh, sutras that he taught during his whole lifetime. And it's basically the same truth that Dogen Zen tries to catch in his Shobo Genzo. Shobo Genzo, Mujo Dai Ho no Dai On. Mujo means, as you can see, Mu is nothing, and Jo means higher or above. So there's nothing higher than Dai Ho, the big Dharma of the Shobo Genzo. The great Dharma of the Shobo Genzo, which cannot be surpassed. The unsurpassable great Dharma of the Shobo Genzo. Not Dai On. Dai On means big favor. Dai is big, On is favor. So, not to speak of Ivanya, not to speak of the big favor of the unsurpassable Shobo Genzo. Kole o Hosha Sezalanya. How could we not repay that debt? How, can't, how could we not be grateful for that and try to repay that? And again, we might want to check with Nishijima. 
How then could we fail to repay our debt of gratitude for the great blessing of the right Dharma I treasury, treasury, the supreme great method? I'm not quite sure how, where they got the method from. Method seems to be their translation of Ho, Dharma. Shasta, Shasta Abbey translation. How much more should we repay our immeasurable indebtedness for the unsurpassed great Dharma of the treasure house of the eye of the true teaching? Um, yeah, so these translations, uh, Nishijima and Shasta Abbey, they both write, but if you want to know where they come from, just look at this text and with a certain effort you can see, oh, oh, this is actually here, the unsurpassed is here and there. here's the big Dharma and there's the Shobo Genzo. Ichinichi, again, very simple, one day. Ichinichi ni mulyo. So, mu is uh, negation. Ichinichi. Ni, mu, and yo is mm, amount um, or measure. So mulyo means unmeasurable. You can't even measure it. It's an amount that's beyond measuring. And the next three characters are actually pretty difficult. So even Japanese. If you go to Hamasaka and ask a Japanese what, what do these three characters mean, they probably couldn't tell you. But again, if you Google it, probably uh, you get, well, Wikipedia has obviously a whole article on it and it tells you how to read it. Gogasha. Gogasha is the reading of it. And unfortunately, they don't have an English version of this article. Uh, but basically, Goga is uh, the Ganges. Do you pronounce it like that, the Indian River? <laughs> I don't know. No. Ganges. Ganges. Okay. Uh, so it's the River Ganges, the Indian River. And the last uh, of these three means uh, sand. So the, the, like the amount of sand grains of the River Ganges. That's a phrase that's often repeated in the sutras when uh, they want to emphasize that it's a huge number. And there's, according to Wikipedia, there's two uh, interpretations. One say it's this number here, 10, how do you say this, uh, potent size by 52, or 10, uh, the, the 56 potents of uh, 10. So either way, it's a cosmic, huge number. And Dogen Zenji says, basically, mulyo, so the uncountable, sand grains of the river Ganges. No Shimyo. So there's something connecting to that. And Shimyo, well, this uh, character means life, and normally it's pronounced me, but in the Buddhist text it's pronounced Myo. And the one before here, that's Shin, that's the body. Um, so it's basically the life of your body. And what he's saying here, uh, suppose you had as many lives as there are grains in the river Ganges, still, sten, sten means to, even now in today in Japan, you have this word stedu, to throw away, um, sten is here, sten koto, throwing away. Um, Imagine you had enough, so many lives as there are sand grains in the river Ganges, still you should throw them away today. Ichijitsu ni mulyo go ga shano shimyo sten koto. Throwing away as many lives as there are sand in the river Gen Ganges today. This is what you should wish. Nego. Negao means to wish, and Beshi again is you should. So you should wish to throw away your life as often as there's sand grains in the river Ganges. Um, what does Nishijima say? 
we should desire to forsake in a single day bodies and lives as countless as the sand of the Ganges. Or Shasta Abbey. All day long we should desire to give up our own lives which have been as innumerable as the sands of the Ganges. Ho no tame ni sten kabane wa seze no wale la kaelite lai hai kuyosu beshi. Here there's a kind of difficult grammatical expression which I don't know from present day Japanese this kabane wa ho no tame ni means for the Dharma for the sake of the Dharma tame is something that you often use in Japanese it means for something ho is the Dharma and sten means again to throw away and you could we could again look this up on Google but also often um, you have an explanation here in the Iwanami uh, version. Um, it would be in the Iwanami version, just in the beginning of page 361. Shikabane. Ah! Ho no Kabane wa. This, according to the commentary here, means uh, Shikabane. The, there's one syllable obviously missing, or maybe at Dogen's times you didn't need, need that syllable. It's, it's shikabane today, and shikabane means a corpse. Like, for example, in yoga, there's this uh, corpse position where you just lie down at the end, usually of a practice period. In Japanese, it's called the shikabane no pose, the posture of the corpse. And here, yeah. Um, if you if you look at the original, you would would uh, hardly get the idea that he's talking about the corpse because it's only kabane. The she is mi missing. Uh, but if you look at the commentary, they tell you that ho no tamini sten. So the corpse that you throw away or the corpse that you sacrifice for the sake of the dharma ho no tamini sten kabane wa. Seze no wale la kaelite lai hai kuyo subeshi. Lai hai kuyo, lai hai are, for example, the prostrations that we do in the Hondo tomorrow. At the beginning of the uh, session, I will do three, and then at the end, all of us will do together three prostrations. That's what you call lai hai. And uh, kuyo is something, is an offering. For example, if you make an offering of flowers at the altar, that's also kuyo. If you put uh, water there or tea or food, that's also kuyo. In the beginning of the Tenzo Kyokun, Dogen Zenji says it's the job of the Tenzo to, to kuyo, to offer meals to the uh, Sangha. So there are also these two characters, kuyo. Uh, appear so lai hai and kuyo together mean uh, to make prostrations and offerings in reverence to something se uh, ze this is the se that uh, appears for example in the word sekai the world mm, you can also read this character yo you might know that all of the characters have at least two readings uh, kun yomi and on yomi uh, the kunyomi would be yo, which means the world, the mundane world. Yo yo no vale la. Uh, we human beings in the mundane world would make prostrations and offerings. We should make prostrations and offerings. Uh, to what? Uh, to the corpse that has been sacrifice for the sake of the Dharma. So somebody who sacrifices his life for the sake of the Dharma, uh, there's somebody who's sacrificed the life of uh, the Dharma. It's our job as people in the world to revere that cause. So even that, when that person is dead, uh, we should pay respect to that person. And then here, Shoten Yujin, that's not referring to 
So here's a contrast between Sese no Valeda. We in the human world, the contrast is here to the, uh, the heavenly beings. Shoten Lyujin. So in all of the heavens, the dragons and gods, Tomoni, together. Tomoni means together, also often used in Japanese today. Uh, in all of the heavens, uh, the gods and dragons together will Kugyo Soncho means more or less the same as Lai Hai Kuyo. They will also pay reverence and respect uh, to this corpse. Shugo uh, Sanle Sudo Tokoro Nari. And they will protect that person and praise that person. Doli Sole Hitsuzen Naruga you and me. So this is a principle that is necessarily so. Necessarily, uh, somebody who gives away his life for the Dharma will be treated with respect both by us human beings and also by the gods in the heavens. And here, Saiten uh, Chikoku, do you know why? That's uh, India, Saiten, so it's in the West. And Chikoku is an old character that is not in use in Japan anymore. But again, if you looked it up in Google, it would probably tell you that this is actually refer referring to India. Uh, like here, again, there's the dictionary. You go here and... Yeah, in this case, you get the English version. Chinese. Japanese. One. Toku. Chiku. Chiku is the one that's usually used in Buddhist texts. Um, but it doesn't tell you that it's India. It tells you it's a male given name, Atsushi, which is also true. So if you want to find the real meaning you probably have to use these look google for these two characters together chikoku um, yeah that's a chinese thing that would also probably mean india so okay this is a more difficult a hard one where you might uh, bite your teeth out for a while but what you could do for example you look up this Chinese one um, of course you won't speak Japanese uh, Chinese I don't speak Japanese um, but what you can do then is you copy this Chinese explanation you look for Google Translator Of course, now it's it's Chinese, it's Japanese, but you have here Chinese. The other name of ancient India. So here it tells you that you finally get to the fact that this means India. Um, so this one would be a, a case of where it's a little bit harder to, to find the original meaning. But Saiten means what the Western uh, lands. When you uh, put the whole sentence in Google Translate in Japanese? Um, yeah, I mean, it's, it's Kamakura Japanese, so I, won I doubt that you get anything intelligible, but I mean, you can always try. So that would be Dogen's text. The West Heavenly Kingdom and the Brahmani Gate Act have a great reputation. Mm. In the West India County, okay, it tells you India. Um, I mean, it's not West India, but actually Saiten and Chikoku mean basically the same thing. So uh, West you don't need here, but in the India country, the skull is played and the skull is of the samurai warfare lord. Heard it ridiculously. Respecting the skull of the skull model of the person of this hearing. So, yeah, I mean, you need, I mean, part of this is true. For example, skull is this, these two characters, Dokuro, which are kind of difficult. 
if you wanted to look this up in the character dictionary, you had a hard time. You have to count the strokes and stuff like that. But this is Doku Lords, it uh, means skull. So he's talking about skulls in India. Saiten mm. Chikoku Niwa. So in India, that basically means in India. Dokuro o Uri, Dokuro o Kau. What made. Uh, what was it? Here. The skull is played in the skull of the samurai warfare lord. <laughs> Dokuro o Uri, Dokuro o Kafu, Balamon are the Balamon, which means a Brahman. Brahman. Um, they made it into a samurai warfare lord. Um, Uri, mean, Uri means basically, uh, Ulu means to, to sell something and Kao means to buy something. That's also in, in use today. Um, we have these two. Here. Here. Dokuro o uri means to sell a skull, and dokuro o kao means to buy a skull. Uh, balamon o ho means, um, ho can mean dharma, but in this case, uh, probably it can also mean, um, how do you say? Um, the, the, the habit of doing something or, or kind of yeah the habit of the brahmas and i heard that this is actually even today the case in india that um, practitioners of yoga or uh, are they called the sadhus these kind of hermits and, and, and practitioners and if a sadhu has a reputation of having attained a really high level of spiritual enlightenment then after he's dead, his bones sell for lots of money. People want to have the bones of this practitioners and maybe the skull so sells for the highest money. Um, so there's obviously these kind of groupies around the, the sadhu and after he's died, they, they kind of uh, compete for the bones and they, they sell uh, these bones among themselves. And that was obviously already the, uh, the case at the time of Dogen. So he's referring to this custom. So Ho in this case probably means the custom of the Brahmans of selling skulls and buying skulls. Hisashku Fumon selling. So we've been heard, hearing these rumors. Fu is the wind and, mo, and, and Mon means to hear. So we, Dogen has never been to India, but uh, he's heard it through the wind. So basically it's a rumor that he's been heard, hearing. Uh, Hisashiku means a long time. So maybe he says, I've been hearing that for a long time. Or he, he says that's actually been transmitted a long time ago already, these uh, stories of uh, Brahmats in India selling skulls and buying skulls. Basically, the point he's making here is um, and well, uh, if you read the rest, uh, I already read the translation, basically explaining the point uh, he's making. You're gonna die anyway, um, sooner or later. Uh, in 100 years, each of us, we will all be dead and our heads will have turned to skulls. Um, if we give everything to the way in this life, not that that is really a reason to give away your life, but if we do that, then people will even pay respect to our skulls when we're dead. Um, if on the other hand we say, no, 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 how can I give away my life? My life is so precious. In 100 years your skull will be lying somewhere in the Hatake and, and nobody's going to even give uh, a fart. Uh, so Dogen Zenji is basically asking which option is better for you. Do you want to cling to your life now and people kick around your skull in a couple of years in the Hatake or do you want to give your life away now and actually even the gods will pay respect uh, to your skull and bones later. I mean, not that we should be really concerned about what other people think about our skulls and bones, but the more important point is you're going to die anyway. You're going to die anyway. 
uh, how do you want to live this one day? Uh, today you have only this one day. It's not, never going to come back. And from tomorrow for five days, we're going to have a session. These five days will never come back to you. If you sit on the cushion and move around and oh, I don't want to be in pain, I would rather be on the beach right now. Why am I doing this to me? And somehow the five days will pass anyway. Yes, but maybe um, we would feel better about these five days if we just give everything of ourselves during these five days to the Zen, to the practice. And then in the end, uh, Dogen Zenji is commenting about the cold and the heat. Right now, it's kind of uh, temperature-wise, it's kind of the best time of the year. It's not too hot, not too cold yet, although it can be sometimes quite hot already in June. But he's saying uh, neither the cold nor the heat will kill you. Neither the cold nor the heat kill a person. Uh, neither the cold nor the heat will kill the Dharma. What kills you and what kills uh, the Dharma is not practicing. So what will kill you, what will kill the way is a lack of practice. And in the end he's talking about uh, Mugi and Wallaby, uh, wheat and bracken. Um, there's the story at, of, of the Buddha at one point uh, when he traveled through India with his disciples. One of the patrons had offered that he could stay in his place for 90 days, but he forgot to think about food. And for 90 days they had nothing to eat but wheat that was actually meant for horses. But still the uh, Buddha didn't complain and he and his disciples for 90 days ate this uh, Food that was meant for horses actually and this wallaby thing is something that we ate a lot in April and according to some Chinese legend uh, there was a tribe that lost in a war and rather than become slaves of the other tribe that they lost again against they retreated to the mountains and survived only on this wallaby on the bracken um, so Dogen Zenji says here, Do Zoku no Sho Shuku Nari. So these are great examples, both from Do, practitioners of the way, and Zoku means lay people. Uh, both from the time of the Buddha, that would Do refer to, uh, people of the way, and normal lay people uh, have been practicing in this way. Um, so we should learn from that. Chi or motome. Motome to means to long for something. Chi means blood, longing for blood. I think in this case he means uh, longing for meat and stuff like that, like animal uh, products. Uh, chi chi means milk. Um, so don't. Again, Dogen Zenji at this time was contemplating to move to the mountains. Maybe, although he was a monk and this community consisted of monks, in the capital that there were ways to get donated meat and sometimes a rich patron would treat them to milk and stuff like that. Again, was the capital after all. While if they moved to the mountains, they were not sure on what to survive on. But Dogen Zenji says, well, if you look for blood and you look for milk, you will be just like Kichiku. Ki, ki is a, a demon and Chiku means a beast or an animal. Um, looking for blood and looking for milk is just like the demons and animals. Uh, Nala wa zalubeshi means you shouldn't learn from these. But uh, Tada masani gyoji naru ichijitsu wa shobutsu no anri nari. Rather, you should just simply practice for one day. Again, ichijitsu means one day, gyoji means to practice. Tada means just, masani means to straight in this case. Uh, straightforward or directly. Uh, just practice straightforward. Uh, 
one day, Shobutsu no Andi, and this will be the way the Buddhas, all of the Buddhas practice. So uh, don't think about me, don't think about milk, uh, don't learn from the demons, but just practice for this one day, like the Buddhas did. Um, okay, so today I kind of uh, explained the text in English while looking at the original. For those of you who don't know any uh, Japanese characters, or don't know Hiragana as well, it might be, well, more or less impossible to follow. But if you already know the Hilagana and you know maybe some characters and you know how to use Google, then it's not impossible. And if you actually invest this time, especially when you are in charge of the Zui Monkey again, for example, uh, you got the whole complete Zui Monkey on, on the internet. I don't know where we are now in the somewhere in the two section. All of this is in the internet. If you put it like this, into Google Translator, it will only be nonsense, I guess. Um, but if you look one by one, I will show you when I was put up by the late Buddhist priest Kenji, the only poor man came and said, my home is poor and it runs for a few days of smoking. Where do they get the smoking here? Zetsuen. Ah, well, it's basically that uh, what he's trying to it runs for a few days of smoking. Basically, it says that um, my home is so poor that we don't can't, can't even fire the stove in the kitchen for several days. So for several times we didn't have uh, fire in the kitchen stove because we had never not if we. But even well, you even get a certain idea of what he's saying here, and if you put them. Uh, one by one, for example, here, Koso is the late Buddhist priest. This is here, there's the late Buddhist priest, and this is the next three are here. This is Ken Ninji, stuff like that. Um, it's not impossible uh, to look it up, and thus, if you already have a certain amount of Japanese, month by month, you will learn more, and after a while. You also understand the structure of Kamakura Dogen's language, which is dif different from today's language, but it's not so difficult. It's just not impossible to understand if you make the efforts and look it up. Um, like here, if you wanted to know Ken Butsumompo, for example, there are several dictionaries here on the internet. What's that? Okay, so much uh, for today. This is basically, as I already said, uh, the final part of um, the section on Bodhidharma. Um, in the next section, Dogen Zenji continues with the second patriarch. Uh, okay, if there's any questions, Anything you want to ask, please ask. Shitsumon ga aleba dozo nan demo kite kudasai. Hey, Yashmas, please. Uh, my question. In part, you talk about seeing the, the Buddha. Yes. What is. Uh, what that would be? Mm, Kembutsu Mompo means literally seeing the Buddha and listening to the Dharma. So listening to the Dharma could be either at a Rinko or Tesho, or it could be, you can also read it in books. When he talks about seeing the Buddha, well, one meaning could be right now we have temples, we have Buddha statues. And when you look at the Buddha statues, some people have maybe more of a connection there and other maybe less, but even just looking at a statue gives you a certain impression of uh, what a Buddha is like. It gives you an impression of uh, the posture. Um, but then again, uh, I didn't make a point of that today, but when Dogen Zenji talks about the transmission from Buddha to Buddha, uh, one meaning is 
the straightforward meaning from Shakyamuni to Bodhidharma, from Bodhidharma to Dogen, from Dogen to to, to, to Um So human beings, teachers. Um, and if you meet a teaching teacher today, you could also say when, when you see a teacher, you're also seeing the Buddha. But in a different sense, um, everything you see and everything you hear is an expression of Bodhidharma. So it's not only this lineage of patriarchs from Shakyamuni to today. Uh, that's covered by the word Buddha, but when you hear a bird sing, you also encounter the Dharma there. Or when you see a tree in front of the Hondo, like there, there was this guy, there's this famous koan, uh, somebody asked Joshu, a Chinese, very famous Chinese Zen master, what did Bodhidharma transmit? And Joshu says uh, the cedar tree in the garden. Or sometimes it's uh, translated as the oak tree. It doesn't really matter if it's cedar tree or oak tree. Uh, obviously, they had a tree there in the garden, and Joshua said, Here, you see that tree there in the garden. Um, or Dogen's engine, in the beginning of the Zui Monkey, he says that Buddhas are like worms or frogs. So basically, anything you see can be a Buddha. Like seeing the Buddha means that you you see the world with fresh eyes and hearing the Dharma means you maybe for the first time you realize oh it's raining um, how come I didn't hear the rain until now um, the moment you hear the rain you're hearing the Dharma the moment you see that tree or that frog um, you're seeing the Buddha. So it doesn't necessarily have to be a Buddha statue. Uh, it doesn't have to be an enlightened master that you have to encounter so that you can see the Buddha. It can be anything. But often for us, as the entrance, we need something that's more easy to, how do you say, discover. Like, uh, you can see anything, you can hear anything, and you can hear the Dharma then, but usually at first we need some explanation to get to that point. So I could imagine for most people it's easier to accept that, well, the Buddha statue that we have in Rondo is a Buddha. And when you tell them, well, actually the worm in the Hatak is also a Buddha, well, Dogen Zenji says that in the Zui Monkey, most people will say, well, but I don't see a halo that warm how, how come how come you call that a buddha where's the halo <laughs> and well dogen then says well as long as you ask that you don't really understand what a buddha is yet you're not following your teacher but so both are expression of buddha both the warm and the statue they're both a manifestation of buddha but probably for most of us it's easier first to say the manifestation when we look at the statue but Again, uh, seeing the Buddha and hearing the Dharma, you can do it anytime, anywhere. You can encounter the Buddha anywhere. So when I said in the beginning, it's thanks to the Buddha patriarchs, it's thanks to their practice that we encounter it. Uh, when you encounter the Dharma, when you hear a frog, it's also thanks to the frogs, it's thanks to the worms, it's thanks to the trees that we see, that we encounter we can encounter uh, the Buddha Dharma anywhere. It's not only that lineage one to the next, but everything you see right now is transmitting already the Buddha Dharma. Yes, please. Uh, <clears throat> these are two Japanese related questions just watching you read that yes what does the nari indicate nari means usually what in Japanese today would be des or da or de aru okay. nari 
Today in Japanese you also have this word nalu, which means to become. Yeah. But in old Japanese, nali doesn't mean to become, but it is. Uh, where do you have, for example, jion nali means it is the compassion, compassionate favor of the busso in this case. Um, well, you have this all over the place. And in modern Japanese, it would be just jion dearu or jion des. If you had the kind of formal um, here, you, in, in the end again, shobotsu no gyori an, uh, anli, anli. Anli is the way of practice. This is the way of practice of the shobotsu or Buddhas. Shobutsu no anli nali. This is the way of practice of all Buddhas. And yeah, in Dogen's text all over the place, here in the next sentence again, you would have the Nadi, you have it all over the place. Uh, uh, one more question, I just noticed also, you said uh, Uri and Kao, or the Kao was spelled Ka and Ka. Ka, yeah, and that's a problem mm, you have when you read, for example, the Zui Monkey in the Iwanami Bunko version. Uh, that's also a difference between the Shobo Genzo version and the Shobo Genzo Zui Monkey. Uh, they are both published by Iwanami. But this one here has straightforward uh, Furigana. While the Zui Monkey has, for example, for Kao, in this case it's um, here. Um, do you know the, the Idowa poem? No. Idowa, um, it's a, the old, now, now it's a i ue o kaki kuke ko sashi suri se so. And the, the old Japanese, they had this Idowa ni ho e do. Um, there's this poem, and I forgot in between, but. Ooh, and then it's the old i. How do you? Ui. Ui no Okuyama. Um, I don't even know how to get it out. Um, in, in the old, they had ya, yi, yu, ye, yo. Uh, anyway, so ui no Okuyama. Not this i, but another i. Ui no Okuyama. And then it's kefu ko hete. Um, uh, let's look this up uh, I'm sure they have this on the internet so um, that's a poem and sometimes attributed to Kobo Daishi the founder of the Shingon sect um, and it, it's the the special thing about this poem is that it's it comprises all of the uh, Japanese what do you say syllables each one exactly once there's there's 48 because there's also this syllable here that you don't use anymore the e and there's the one e that I, I just try to type into my words program but it doesn't have it um, so here you've got this Wikipedia thing maybe there's some where, where we can see it more easily this thing here you got it and here you got maybe here it's a little bit easier to see the meaning of the poem Ilo, Ilo means colors and ni oe do means to have a good smell. So um, colors don't have a smell, but uh, the colors here could refer to the shiki sokuze kuku sokuze shiki in the hanya shingyu form is emptiness, emptiness is form. So uh, ilo is written with, if you write it with the kanji, with the same kanji as shiki, which means form. And ilo can also but then refer to 
things of an erotic nature. Um, so often when Japanese interpret this uh, sentence from the Hanya Shingyo Shiki Sokuze Kufu Sokuze Shiki, they explain it as uh, every girl is beautiful when she's 20, but when she turns 80, she's an old lady and not so attractive anymore. That's Shiki Sokuzeku. All beauty will become emptiness eventually. That's not the original meaning um, of the Hanya Shingyo line, but often Japanese interpret it like this because Shiki, when you read it, Ilo means this kind of uh, erotic attractiveness. Uh, base, so anyway, ilo wa nio edo means uh, ilo, kind of outside beauty, also has a good smell. But chili nulu o, chili nulu o means that it falls or drops like flowers. Like, like flowers in spring, they smell well, but eventually they drop. So basically what uh, the poem is referring to here is kind of this, the 20-year-old beauty eventually will get older. Uh, ilo wa nioido. Ah, here you got the, actually, here you got the characters. Ilo wa nioido. So this is the shiki of shiki sokuzeku in the Hanya Shinyo. Uh, chili no lo. Uh, colors are beautiful and they smell well, but they will drop. Waga yo tare zo tsune naram. And uh, if you write it with characters, this waga yo means our world. Tarezo means who. Tsune means be permanent. Who in our world would be permanent? Ui no Okuyama. That's why I'm quoting this poem to you. You were asking about this ka, ku, kau, spelled kahu. The, here you have these two characters, ke, fu, ke, fu, but you read them kyo. You read them kyo because they stand for this. Ui no Okuyama, kyo, koete. Ui means it's the opposite of wu wei, kind of a Chinese word which means non doing, uh, just going with the flow. And ui is the opposite of that, kind of clinging to yourself and saying, I'm in charge, I'm doing this. Um, when you make an action, and you have a goal and you try to get that goal, that would be ui. Uh, okuyama means the deep mountains and koete means to go beyond them and kyo means today. So today let's go beyond the deep mountains of wanting something, clinging to the ego and uh, uh, act out of this. Asaki yume mishi Ei mosesu. Asaki yume mishi ei mosesu. Uh, asaki means shallow. Uh, yume means dreams. Mishi is the negation of to see. So don't watch shallow dreams. Ei mosesu means to become drunk and wake up from your drunkenness. Um, so the reason why mm, I'm referring to this is uh, because in old Japanese, Today you would write kyo like this. Ui no okuyama kyo koete. Today would be like this, but in old Japanese it's like this kefu. Or kau, today it's like this, and kafu. And if you make the effort to look at the Shobo Genzo Zuimonki in the Iwanamai Bunko, you have even Modern Japanese often stumble because the furigana follow this old style in the Zuimonki, in the case of the Zuimonki. In the Shobo Genzo, it's modern, so you don't have it with the Shobo Genzo, but with the Zuimonki, you have to be careful because you have this kind of thing all over the place. For example, butterflies are called uh, chocho in Japanese, and it, with hiragana, it would be like this. If you write it with kanji, it's like this. But the hiragana are like this, cho cho, like chi and a small yo. And to make it long, you have a u, cho cho. And this would be like this, tefu tefu. 
what you pronounce as tocho. And that's kind of a little bit uh, mendoxai, you would say. It's, it's, you, you just have to learn that. There's nothing but learning that. Uh, I mean, it's actually the fact that you don't have that in modern Japanese makes Japanese pretty easy to learn. For example, compared to to English, you never really know. For example, you have an, an I, you don't know if it's an I, it's an E, how do you pronounce it? Um, if, if you grow up in, in, in an English-speaking country, then you, you all learn it by by heart. But um, the only exceptions today is kind of the, the Ha, which becomes a Wa, and you got the He, which becomes an E. These are the only two exceptions I could think of now in Japan, where you don't pronounce something like you write it. But in the old days, they had a lot of this, or sometimes you got, like kanon san for some reasons they, they, they spelled it Kwanon in the old days, but you don't pronounce it Kwanon, it's Kanon. Ku wa, ku wanon, for some reason. Uh, you got all these little strange things in old Japanese. Mm. But, I mean, in two-day section, it, it's not that it's appearing all over the place. I mean, you had it here, for example, Awaremi. In this case, you have the Ha, which is pronounced Wa. And, and there was this case, Iwanya, which is spelled Ihanya. And you have to know that actually here. It's up here. If you want to look up this Iwanya, you have to know that the Ha is actually needs to be replaced by Iwanya. The same, Awaremi. Awalemi means to have pity, and if you copy it like this and look for it like this, probably you don't find anything. Ahalemi. Ah, well, actually, here Google replace it. This replace it, replace it, it with Awalemi. So this would be actually the, the right thing. Awalemi. Um, but certain things, yeah, through practice and try and error, you find this. Mm. Kafu is Kau, and Kefu is Kyo, Tefu is Cho, stuff like that. Hmm. Why it's like this, I don't know, but... Hmm. Anything else? Yes, please. If we already have the manifestation of Buddha Dharma in the box in the worms, hmm. why would we need the patriarchs? Mm, we need somebody to point us to that fact. I mean, every so many millions of years, somebody wakes up to the fact by themselves. Like, like uh, they say Shakyamuni didn't have a teacher. Uh, he woke up to it by itself. And uh, according to Blue Buddhist teaching, at one point, Buddhism will disappear, but then in some 10,000 years or 100,000 years or a million years, somebody else is going to wake up. So it's not totally impossible to wake up to the fact, but it's much easier if you have somebody who points to it. It's probably, well, I don't know if it's a good uh, comparison, but um, if a war happened and uh, all of the electricity and all books and everything was destroyed, um, is it possible that at one point we, we get again to this point where we are now like for example we would forget for example that even things like that water boils when you heat it to 100 degrees would it be possible to again get that knowledge yes of course but it takes a lot of time while right now we learn that as kids and we learn to integrate and differentiate stuff uh, even though we never use it but we learn it when we're in high school and it's possible because, because we have somebody who teaches us that. Um, we could, in theory, grow up somewhere in the jungle. I have never met with a math teacher and still uh, 
find out by ourselves how to integrate and differentiate a formula, but, but it's close to impossible, I guess. Um, so, of course, there might be some genius who wake up to the fact that the sound of a frog is already the truth, but it's much easier if somebody points you to that and reminds you that, well, actually, you don't find the truth somewhere, but you're already in it, you're already in it. You need somebody to remind you over and over again, I think. Or at least it makes it much easier if you have somebody uh, to point you to the fact. Kani Arimasenka, is there anything else? Any other questions? If not, then I wish you a good session. Well, this time it's going to be one hour shorter. Only 69 periods. Sur <laughs> 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 Say